Yes, let me shed some light here, people. I am glad. I am happy as everybody else, right? When it comes to the big dog Roman Reigns, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, I am happy that he's back. I am happy that he's Universal Champion. I really am. I really am. But... Here's my problem. Hello guys, Overrate Gaming here and this is the part of the show where I talk to you guys about wrestling and what's going on in said wrestling world. If you want to see some more of this, leave a like, comment, subscribe, become a part of the Overload Alliance today by clicking that subscribe button. We're trying to get a thousand of you guys to join the movement. It'll be very nice if you guys could stick around. Now, anyways, Today we're going to talk about Roman Reigns and kind of the situation which is going on on SmackDown, um, which is a weird one. Like I'm intrigued to see how it goes, considering they've added a lot of pieces to the puzzle. But it is still quite weird, and I'll, I'll explain that. I'll explain it to you in a minute. But first, we've got to kind of uh, go on the timeline. So for those of you who are new to wrestling or um, don't know much about wrestling or haven't watched wrestling in a while. I'm going to go for it with you guys. So, Roman Reigns is this character which came out of a faction called The Shield. The Shield broke up, uh, went into their own separate little storylines, and they picked Roman Reigns uh, to be the guy, the main the main guy. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, um, that's like um, Bruno San Martino back in the, uh, in the early times. That's like Hulk Hogan in the 80s. Uh, you look at... The Rock and Stone Cold, they were the guy in the 90s. And in the 2000s, it was John Cena. So, to take up that mantle for the 2010s and so on and so forth is Roman Reigns. Um, who actually, he's cousins with The Rock, for those of you who don't know. But um, here's, the, here's the problem. Uh, when Roman Reigns broke out on his own, the fans wanted uh, Daniel Bryan, who was another great wrestler... Uh, to take the position of being the guy but WWE what they did was try to push Roman Reigns as the guy and say this is your guy as much as possible and we were just not having it it came to the point where what they were doing is putting Roman Reigns in any situation that he could win to try and see if the WWE Universe or the fans would actually bite on and say yeah he's our guy and again, we just weren't having it. To the point where, unfortunately, I think it was 2018, uh, Roman had to step away from the sport uh, because he had cancer, which again, don't rest that on your worst enemy. Um, you know, we all wished him a speedy recovery. And the, uh, how long was it? It wasn't too long, you know? It was like, I'd say a good like six months afterwards. Like the guy came back fit, of, fit as a fiddle, strong as ever, right? Now, as you can tell, the booking of Roman Reigns has been here or here or there. It's been a combination of we want Roman Reigns in this position, but it's just, but they, they, they've they've miscued it. They've they've missed the timing of it. So you know when we look at that, we're looking at Daniel Bryan, we're looking at Cesaro, guys who we can get behind, and they're saying no, Roman, that's your guy. We're like no, you can't pick for us. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's kind of been the backlash over um, WWE versus the fans for many, many years. I, myself, you can go on my Twitter, Facebook. I absolutely hated Roman Reigns because I hated how he was booked. I hated how he was pushed to us. But over time, I kind of realized, um, okay, you know, this guy is actually really good. He's a really good talent. They just need to book him in a way which doesn't seem like they're pushing him on us. Do you know what I'm saying? So now, SummerSlam. We skipped to SummerSlam, which was last week. Well, two weeks ago, technically. Um, big match between Bray Wyatt and, the, uh, and Braun Strowman. Bray Wyatt comes out with the win. And afterwards, Roman Reigns comes out from nowhere, attacks the two of them. Cool. We got a triple threat match for payback. Um, now, there was these... Uh, there was deliberation of what Roman Reigns was going to do uh, when it came to Friday Night Smackdown. Braun Strowman signed. The Fiend signed. But... Roman Reigns was kind of, uh, I'll sign when I want to, I'll sign when the time is right. And behind him, well, sitting next to him, was a returning Paul Heyman. For those of you who don't know Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman is the manager uh, of 
Brock Lesnar, who is a very, very successful WWE superstar as well in his own right. And also, uh, when we talk about running promotions, Paul Heyman is an absolute god. He used to run a show called ECW before WWE took a hold of it and absolutely ruined it. So, <laughs> now you get to this point where Roman Reigns is back. He's got a new attitude, new kind of look, new teeth. But also, he's got Paul Heyman by his side. So he's not just, you know, he's a badass in his own right. But he's not just charging into things like, yeah, I'm the big dog. I'm going to get kicked the crap out of you. He's thinking about it now. He's becoming a lot more smarter, right? And obviously, with Paul Heyman behind him, he's got that smartness in his brain. You know what I mean? What to do when to do it, which is fair enough. Now... Us as wrestling fans, we were like, yes, that's what we want. You know, that's a very, 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 very good connection that Roman's got. Hopefully now he can be put in a certain position where, we, where you know, he's a good reign. It's a good reign. It's a good title run. Because we know he's going to be a universal champion when he comes back. Right. So if anyone was going into payback thinking that Strowman was going to come out with a win or The Fiend, like, no, he's he's not. Like, let's be let's let's be real. The the whole thing was set up for Roman to come back and be Universal Champion, which I am okay with, right? I think Roman ha has got to the point of his career where he deserves a title run. He deserves a world title run. He deserves to have that status, that pole that WWE tried to put him on for for a very long time. I think he's got to that point in his career where he earned it, right? However, the point this is the point in the video, and WWE has struggled with this. I feel a lot. Um, in the way, one, how their characters are portrayed, two, the way their characters are portrayed to everyone else in the locker room, you know, how they kind of connect and how they, you know, how they connect with other people in the locker room, and three, the way they connect in matches, I feel like there's a huge disconnect when it comes to that, and I'm explaining to you why, okay, so, obviously, when it got to payback, um, this is what I'm explaining, when it got to payback, Roman uh, was still hadn't signed the contract, right? Which is cool. And but the problem was is it was built to be a triple threat match. Do you know what I mean? It was built to be a triple threat match, which means if you have two competitors in a triple threat match, that's you know that's 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 not the match that we're we're expecting, or not the match that we're being told that we're going to have. Do you know what I mean? Which kind of just makes it like. Eh, eh, eh. So, anyways, the match started. Uh, Strowman attacked Bray Wyatt. So these guys are beating the crap out of each other. So cool. And then about say, I'd say the last ten minutes of the match, basically they did a big spot, uh, which they've done for you know they pull out of the bag once every three years when they got two when they got two big guys in the ring. Um, they pull out a spot. Bray Wyatt does a superplex and Strowman. The ring breaks. Bang. Right. Then Roman comes out of nowhere. Signs the contract, then kicks the crap out of these guys and becomes the Universal Champion. Now, again, I'm not first that he's the Universal Champion. That's not my problem, okay? Like I said again, he deserves it. However, the problem is the match itself. Why? <laughs> there is a bunch of different ways they could have handled that. Yet again... It seems like there's a, that's, a, that's a common thing with WWE. There's a bunch of ways they can handle a certain situation and they choose the worst one out of all of them. <laughs> okay, now I just want to address a couple things. First of all, one, Bray Wyatt is not buried, okay? Yes, he was going to lose. And yes, Bray Wyatt is this unstoppable monster, but you've got to understand, okay, you're up against an unstoppable monster in Braun Strowman, being as though he's reverted back to his monster gimmick. And then you've got Roman Reigns, who's this fresh new guy, new attitude, new look, and again, he's an unstoppable monster. So when three unstoppable monsters are in a match, who do you think, like, one, one unstoppable monster's going to win? Do you know what I mean? So I, again, it's kind of one of those, like, he's not buried. He's not buried by any means. So that you you know what I mean? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't take it as that. I wouldn't take it as that. Um, secondly, this is what my, my main problem. Now I don't mind a heel facing another heel in the match, right? But if you're telling me, okay, Roman is a heel now. Bro, Broman, Braun Strowman has turned into a heel, and Bray Wyatt's still a heel. Then who's the face? 
Do you know what I mean? I mean, I get if WWE wanted to portray three badass dudes who don't care about anyone else and they just want to beat the crap out of each other in the ring. I get that. If you put, if you, if you put this match as if this match is absolute carnage, you know, these guys are just gonna beat the hell out of each other. It's no holds barred. Then the crowd would be like, okay, we pick you. We want to choose. We pick you. We want to cheer for. And you go off that, which is fair enough. But the problem is, is again, uh, again, Thunderdome and that kind of thing. But you've got three heels beating the crap out of each other. But there, there's no, you know, there's no kind of good guy, which again is not necessarily a big, a huge problem. But it does bring kind of a confusion when the top guys, you know, the three top guys in your roster of SmackDown are all bad guys. And there's no, there's no, there's no opposed, there's no opposite. Do you know what I'm saying? There's no opposite. See, if Daniel Bryan was to come back, then you know you've got a main eventer who's who's of that caliber. If um, if obviously I, I know the the working on Big E, which is cool. Yeah, if Big E was you know what pushed to that status of main eventer, then boom. You again, you've got that opposing, you got that opposing side. If uh, they was to do Matt Riddle, or if they was to do, um, if the wow, there's not many faces on SmackDown, or many good faces. Wow, that's a, that's a mad one, you know. But anyways, but the point of what I'm trying to make is, if they had that oppose, you know, if the, if they had that main event scene where there was more, there was, you know, a balance between the faces and the heels. That way, you know, the connections could be greater. Then that's cool, right? So yeah, it was a bit confusing considering uh, all of these guys are, are technically heels, and these guys, you know, does who, you know, who am I cheering for? Who is the fan cheering for? That's 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 one of the main things where I kind of had a bit of a problem with, you know what I mean? Or who am I supposed to get behind? Um, which again, maybe in the coming weeks when we get to Survivor Series, it'll be made a lot more clear. But at at the moment, it's kind of a hit, you know, here or there, that kind of thing. But which this brings me on to my third point, and this was the most annoying thing. They did it with Brock Lesnar last year, and I absolutely hated it. Okay, I'm not a fan of this at all. Okay, why are you going to make a match and say there's how many or so people in there? One's missing, and then you just bring him out and have him go for everyone. Like that's what the Royal Rumble is for. You know what I mean? It's not. Like it, it doesn't br it doesn't add anything to it. If anything, it takes it away. You know what I mean? The way I would have done it, right? I could understand if Roman was kind of like, no, I'm gonna be smart. I'm a I'm gonna do the contract. You know what I mean? I'm gonna do the contract when I when I feel when I see fit. I get that. It's smart plays, right? Smart plays. But again, it makes no sense if it's a triple threat match and only two competitors are in there, and then the third one decides to do it when he feels like it. Like no. No, 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 no. If anything, what they should have done is say, listen, you are contractually obligated to sign the contract by this time. Do you know what I mean? Instead of having all that bollocks, because I, I don't like that, right? Roman Reigns, if anything, what they should have done is they should have been like, has Roman signed the contract? Da, 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 da. We don't know. We don't know. And then, boom, Roman comes out. Boom, size the contract. Yeah, I'm in this match, boy. I'm in this match, boy. And then you could have like Braun go after Roman. Bang! Roman smacks him. Go Bray goes after Roman. Bang! Smacks him. And then Roman's got the upper hand. Roman's got the upper hand. Da 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 da. And then you know Braun or Bray takes him out of the equation for a little bit. Then you got Braun and Bray just going ham at each other. And then Roman basically throughout that match picks his spots where he moves away, uses that brain, got Paul Heyman in his head like, yo, you, you strike it this time, let them take each other out, let them take each other out. And again, that's ring psychology there, 101. Roman's like, let them take each other out. And then once they get tired, smack, steel chair, smack, steel chair, bang, Superman punch, bang, Superman punch, buff, spear, buff, spear, wreck everyone and leave, Roman is your new universal champion, that would have made a lot more sense, rather than him just waiting until like the last 10 minutes and just being like, eh, <laughs> again, I get it, it's a heel move, it's a heel move to make, but it's a heel move which is, it, it just, it's just, it don't make sense, it's dumb, do you know what I mean, instead of, instead of working the crowd, it's, it's just, an, it's just annoying, 
You know what I mean? It's not it's not the good kind of annoying. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, damn you. I'll get you next time. I want the hit or face to get you next time. It's more like, well, why the hell are they doing that? Do you know what I mean? And that's that's my main that's my main issue. They they, they could have handled it a lot better. But either ways, I'm not hating on the fact that Roman is Universal Champion. I feel like again he's deserved it. Um, really deserved that win. And honestly, I couldn't I couldn't be happier for Roman. Uh, he's considering the story he's had, the work he's had to put in to get to that point. I definitely respect Roman. And also, it doesn't help when people are now complaining that Roman's a heel. <laughs> so again, we you know you know remember remember fans remember WWE, WWE Universe. You wanted him to turn heel. You wanted him to turn heel, and now that he is heel, then you have a problem. Do you know what I mean? Come on now, come on now. This is exactly why WWE don't listen to us that much. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But either way, I'm happy that Roman won the Universal Championship. And hopefully the reign he has with Paul Heyman by his side is a very, very good one. But without being said, this is the end of the video. So if you would like this and want to see me talk about more wrestling, give you some topics to talk about in wrestling. Um, I'd love to go hear you guys' feedback. But... I will see you guys next time. Remember to like, subscribe, join the Override Alliance, and I shall see you guys next time. Take care. Bye now.